Good morning. Anyone there? One person watching. Good morning, whoever you are. Hope you're doing well. I will be with you one moment. I'm trying to... Where's my YouTube? There it is. Um... Morning. How are we all doing today? Hopefully you can hear me okay. What's going on in there? Oh no, this has popped off the bed. Oh, it's warm in there. Oh, what? That's why I didn't have enough. I should have put a broom on it. That is toasty. I was printing out some ASA on the Formax Pro. And I must say, the layer adhesion is absolutely amazing on the, with the Formax. Because it's a self-contained printer. I'll just grab... The part cooling in is great. Only overhangs, as you can see. But... Compared to the layer separation for my Mark III, it is a lot better. But for some reason, it just pops off the bed, which I'm a little bit annoyed about. But yeah, the, the layer separation on this is horrendous. Morning, 3D Print Viking. How are you? But that's the layer separation on that. There is none. It actually adhered really nice. It's just the overhangs. I think there's a better part cooling fan, but then again, it's just blowing hot air on it. Because obviously it's inside. But yeah, it just looks like it's got caught and got, got pulled off the bed. But it was printing so so well. Yeah, no no layer separation. I tell you, an enclosure knife makes a difference. Even the print quality is really nice. Definitely not as rough as the. Uh, my Prusas, that's for sure. But yeah, just look at all the layer separation on this. Compared to that. It's just so much better. But yeah, um, what was I doing? Low sound today. Uh, oh, that's because I turned it down the other day because I had a fan going. So this should be a lot better now. You should be able to hear me now. So you should, yeah, that should be a lot better now. I had the fan going. I had the big fan in here the other day, so I had to turn the turn the filter down, so I didn't pick up too much background noise. But yeah, anyway, uh, the camera hasn't refocused. Why have you not refocused? That is the wrong camera. Don't even know why I've got that one on there. Um, auto focus. There we go, that's better. I don't know why that one's on there. Um, oh, it's leave of time. Morning, Martin, how are you? So, yeah, a bit of a uh, any cubic rent this morning. Um, I've been trying to get hold of the source code for the, the Formax Pro. And the Predator, but they won't release the Predator firmware for some reason. I don't know why. They won't tell me. Um, and the Formax Pro, they supposedly, they've released it on their um, on their GitHub. If I change over to the desktop, I'll show you. Oh, wrong one. That's my web. So, supposedly, for any cubic, I've actually released the... Oh, no, that's the Formax. Uh, where's the Formax Pro? The Formax Pro firmware on June the 13th. But, if you look inside the configuration.h file and look at the board settings here, it's set for ramps. 
And the Formax Pro uses a Tri Gorilla board. So this firmware is not set up for the Formax Pro at all in any shape or form. No PID tuning. I bet even the bed size is wrong. Uh, find bed. Uh, nope. What was it? Y underscore max. Uh, y max position is 215. X max is 272. That's not even right. Uh, X min position is minus 8.5. No, it's not. It's 3. So this isn't even set up right. So I don't even know what where they've pulled this from or what. But it's not the right thing for the 4 max pro. Same goes for the Chiron. Uh, supposedly, according to the the GPL 3D printed GPL offenders website, the Chiron supposedly has had its firmware released. But if you go into this and you go to configuration.h, it yet again, oh, uh, board is. Uh, oh, where is it? Board is set to ramps 14. So that's the same as the thing about the firmware. But the ramps 14 board, if you actually go into the boards file, um, which would be the pins, I actually find boards.h, there's a ramps 1.4. So, and. Um... Oh, yeah. Oh, cheers. Thanks very much. Oh, that's right. Postman. Um. So, supposedly, this is. Right, it's from 1.4. So, no TFT. So, I don't know what's going on then. Because the, the Tri Gorilla board isn't even in the pins list for for it it's got none of the see so I just don't know yes the board is different than the one you have to set on the loader more than Leicester So yeah, I, I don't really know what is going on here. So I have asked for a newer version of the Formax Pro firmware. Because this is, I don't know, it's just TFT Formax Pro. Oh, oh what am I doing? Wrong screen. The thing is, I'm not willing to upload this to my printer if it's not right, because it'll just break it. So, I've asked for if they've got a newer firmware release for it, so I can look into it. Uh, they won't give the, the Predator firmware out, I don't know why. So, I don't know what's going on with it. Which is really annoying. So, yeah. But, it does print nice. Compared to 
the same ASA filament on the Mark III. This is the Mark III and see all the layer separations. Um, but this hasn't got any on it whatsoever. It's actually fused it really nicely. The overhangs are a bit wispy, but that's because it's blowing hot air. So, but yeah, this the the Mark III has got so many. Oh, oh, there you go. I just broke his leg off because it's not adhered properly. Oh, and I've broken his leg off that one as well. That was the opposite one this time. <laughs> So, uh, but the layer separation on the front and everything is a lot better. But I need to redo that. So, yeah, I don't know what to do. So, uh, someone's released a 1.1.9 Formax firmware, but it doesn't have the firmware sensor working, auto power off, power recovery, or anything on it. Um, this uh, Jack Waterfall's done this, but. It's got none of the, the actual features of what it's supposed to mean. Yeah, well, I'll, uh, I'll go reprint it anyway. I need to reprint it because I've got to take photos of them now. I've got a small light box actually turning up finally. But the thing is, none of these firmwares for, from the Anycubic GitHub are set correctly. So unless they've like changed the pins files or anything... I wouldn't be willing to put um, that firmware straight on my printer. And supposedly, according to the firmware they got in here, the max temp is set to 265, but I can't print at 265. So, I want to go and look at Prusa's, uh, Prusa's GitHub. I want to see what theirs is set to. Prusa. Somewhere. Find max uh, temp. Uh, I'll just search for temp. Temperature sensors. PID temp, PID temp. Okay. What is it actually under? Find two six five. Oh, heat to zero, max temp. There we go. Not actually stored in that file. That's helpful. Um, uh, right, here we go. Here to zero. Max temp is four ten. Oh, it's in the Rambo file. So it's. Um, I have a Mark three. NC, so heat at zero, max temp is 410 or 305, depending on what it's doing. So yeah, I, I want to sort, I want to up the temperature on the on the formax, but I can't because it's not letting me. Uh, I need to go back to this. I need to. Export this for the Predator. And print, I'm going to print a... Uh, I won't move. A uh, Jessica Rabbit model on the Predator. In some uh, Vertigo Starlight for the base and Vertigo Grey for the, the, the actual Jessica Rabbit. But I need to clear all this off. Go back to the Formax. 
filamentum ASA. Need to change this to 255. 255. Uh, actually, I might leave this 100 this time. I want a brim. And need to import this again. So, how's everyone's m Monday going? Four of you, three of you in the chat. Uh, this one's going up to 169. And slice. Slow. <laughs> oh, this E3D boxes I've still got all over the place. I haven't packed sort them of all out yet. So I've stopped this and it's still sat. The bed's still sat at 80 degrees and the uh, E temps at 255. It's not a bad thing, I suppose. Ah, that's hot. Oh, hot. Hey, morning, Richard. Kid's not dead yet. No, my kids aren't dead yet. They're in the house. In a minute. Right, I need to export this. I need to change this to that. Save. Yes. And then copy that from there over to the SD card. Which is here. Oh yeah, I didn't rename it, did I? I must have named it afterwards. ASA. Um, oh, morning, Matt. Uh, I had a... Yeah, well, the weekend wasn't too bad, actually. Um, I... Uh, we ended up going to Leeds Castle yesterday to the carnival of history they were doing. Since we literally live a stone's throw from Leeds Castle. Um, which was actually not too bad, actually. It was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. I thought I was going to be uh, bored out of my head. Uh, I need to eject that there. Change back to there. Pop that out of there. Pop that back into there. Return print on print. I tell you, the, the, the temperature inside this Formax is in really, really warm. Oh! Get back there. It's annoying me. Oh, I've got another packaging thing here. Oh, Martin, you didn't print anything all weekend. No, I haven't printed anything all weekend. I'm literally just doing it now. So yesterday I had a problem with my Ender 3. I um, stuck a filament in it, set it all up to print, and it just wouldn't stick to the bed. It would come loose. And then later on I worked out that um, I'd stuck ABS filament in there and trying to print at PLA temperatures. How high can you run the ambient temp in the Formax? I have no idea. But I can, I'm, I can literally touch the side and I can feel the heat through it. No, we only went to went to it because obviously we live a stone's throw from it. And um, we got a, a year pass the other week for um, us two and the four kids. It was 70, 74 pounds for a year pass. And since we literally live, well, we can literally go out the back of our garden, walk, I don't know, 100 metres, and we're already in Leeds Castle grounds. That's how close we live. 
Um, ambient temp, I don't know. I am thinking about getting a uh, thermometer f to go inside it. Someone on Thingiverse did design a holder and that for it. Uh, any cubic for Max Pro. Um, also, there's a couple of new fan ducts as well, which I wouldn't mind. That's a new one. Ooh, Vortex fan duct. Ah, someone's done a Marlin 2.0 for it. Um, oh no, hang on. Oh no, that's a standard Formax. Oh yeah, I could do, can I? Um, I don't know if it's actually running at the minute. 2468, um, what is it? 223. Uh, yeah, it is running in a minute. I suppose it's 31 degrees in here at the moment. I am more of a mist. Uh, Richard, yes, I did see Teaching Tech's video. I watched that this morning when I was in here. Yeah, it was really good, actually. Um, Matt saw it. Knew I remember seeing it. Yeah, I'll stick that in there in a minute, actually. I need to find a USB plug. Um, it's currently plugged into the actual wall socket USB. Uh, no, I haven't seen 3D Making Noobs video on the on his uh, wall. Um, where was it? There it is. Temperature gauge for the 4 Max Pro. So, I think I'm going to grab one of these. If I can find one in the UK. Um, let's see if we can find one. Amazon. Uh, Prime. Okay, that doesn't help. Uh, car temperature panel gauge. Oh, there's nothing catchy on Nope. Yeah, Luban software is a big good big kit. Uh Richard, no, it's a uh, well. No, it's not a slicer. It is a program that splits. It allows you to scale up a model to however big you want. You input your printer's dimensions, and then it cuts it up into all all bits to fit on um, uh, onto your bed. And it has um, it gives it keys and plugs and everything. So it's um, it's a pretty good bit of kit. I actually I managed to slice two models when I was doing a trial. Uh, no, this isn't my wishlist post. Uh, my wishlist page is here. I've got loads of, uh, um, uh, got that's, yeah, obviously, this is my main wishlist page. Um, then I've got, uh, yeah, I've got a few wishlists. So, um, but no, yeah, there's, but no, this is, um, I'm trying to find the. Uh, Oh, a max is off. Is that a 12 volt one? Oh, that's not too bad. So I've been trying to find a uh, pump for the next uh, project. Alright, so I can't find... Let me see if I can get one on eBay. Five volt. Oh, I can. Not from Hong Kong. Oh, here we go. UK. No, oh, that's not bad. Five nine nine. I'll add that to watch this time yet. Uh, I'll go back to that. Does some awesome lithophanes also new vault? Yeah, I haven't checked it out since it was first. Um, it first come about. I haven't um <coughs> got to it. I need to look into it because there's models and that and I want to do bigger and bigger. 
Help us cleaning the nozzle. Yeah, the Formex has got a, a brass brush on the side of it to clean the nozzle, but I don't think I've got my bed level properly. I'm going to fucking uh, sort it out a little bit. Oh, it's toasty in here. That might be a bit better. Um, do do do. cable out of. I don't know. Yeah, I'm just need a USB plug now. Which I should have one technically somewhere. Oh, unless it's still plugged into the wall down there. Unless I've got an extension somewhere. Which I don't think I have. I think I've used it. We could print a full size brick hull. <laughs> we could print all our, mo all our models in large scale. Um, nope. Where's my damn USB plug? Yeah, it's, the cable's not quite long enough to reach my USB hub. Is that still plugged in down there? No, it's not. Where the hell is that gone then? Um. Hmm. I have to get the boy to run one out too. Get the crap out of kids. <laughs> uh, I'll have a look at it. I'll download with uh, Luban and have a look. It's been a while since I've used it. Um, where's my WhatsApp? My bedside table. There we go. So, mate, you're not working? Or are you on break? Oh, that's how my coffee done. <coughs> oh, I actually went down the wrong hole. Grab a uh, Luban. Luban. Luban 3D. <coughs> Anyone want to check it out? There's a link. Oh, is it raining for you, is it? Yeah, our temperature's starting to really go up again. Hang on a sec. Oh, sorry about that. Google Drive. Uh, Windows 10. <coughs> Windows 64. Oh my Jesus. Download. Best to ask for key before downloading. Now you have to buy one.
How do you get a month for free then? Oh, free trial license. Oh, really? You have to download it? No, you have to download it and then we, you have to install it and read it. Ugh. I really need to register with Microsoft. So I have to go to help about. Grab the license ID from there. Copy. Yeah, paste it in there. I'll do it to there. Send. Oh no, wrong thing. Ugh. Oh, that's better. See if I get an email back. But yeah, anyway. All my start boring. Let's uh go to desktop. Alright. Oh, what seem to be available for Linux? Um, was it not? Uh, no, Mac and Windows. Unfortunately. But anyway, here we go. This is the interface. So we want to go. Um, oh man, this has changed a bit. File. Let's have a look. A uh, new... Oh, that's not what I wanted. I just opened a new room page. Oh, what's happened there? Oh, I think I know what's catching. It's my fan duct. Yep. I think my fan duct on the Formax just spoke. Uh, and good morning, Alistair. How are you? Let's find a model. Oh, crap. Yep. No. Nope. Yeah, my fan looks just completely out. That is hot in here. I think that's printed in PLA. Okay, I won't print any more on this until I can get that done. But since it's still hot, oh really? The magnets just come out the door. Don't you kidding me? Yeah, I think the fan duct on that's printed in PLA. That's helpful. Uh, well, I've got three models. Uh, I'll just go Voodoo Bree. Let's grab her body. There we go. And then we should be able to do mesh. Luban. Uh, yeah, millimeters. Come on. Here we go. Right, method. Is uh, oh, what's the method? Not stack. What's the method, Matt? Is it module? Yes, module. And then we can increase the scale of it. So, say I want uh, actually. Uh, in the Z, let's make her a meter tool. There we go. So a meter tool, and that will slice it up. So if I have 370 bed diameter, actually let's put it back to millimeters. 370, uh, print volume is 400. That will... Rejiggle the cuts. Actually, I should be able to move it over a bit better. Uh, plug shape, we can go with... Uh, I don't know. Triangles. Plug depth of... 5. Like that. And then if we do... <coughs> oh, it's a natural cut. Ooh, export parts. Um, Luban cuts. 
It would probably be easier if you scale this up to the size that you want in your slicer and then export the... Oh, it's doing something. It's probably going to kill my computer as well. What are we looking at? Oh, Streamlabs is actually using more of my processor. So in theory, it should... I should have done it square, to be honest. I think it's missing parts out. But yeah, that's basically what it does. But yeah, I, I would suggest if you want a big model, scale it up in your slicer or something first and then export it and then import it into that. Because that way, if it's like a multi-part like this, it's you're going to have the correct scale for each part. There it is. <clears throat> this function is available on licensed computers only. So yeah, there you go. I'm not really bothered about exporting. Machine time to do that would be 1,200 hours. Cut that in half, because obviously I'll print a point four. Layer height. Yeah. 12, 12, 1,200 hours. <coughs> but yeah, that's pretty much what it does. Which is actually really good. I just haven't got around to actually using it properly yet. But yeah, if you want, have a look at the litho bit. Okay, we'll do. I will do when it starts responding again. I could just kill it off. Uh, close program. And it's a portable program as well. So let's... Um, litho... Where is it, Matt? Or do I have to import first? Uh, no. It's not free. I say, hopefully I'll get a, a one-month license. It's in file, is it? Oh, great. <coughs> oh yeah, Lipophane, there it is. Aha! So browse for a photo. Okay, let me pull a photo down from my Google. Um do 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 uh, bypass all of this. That's from all from yesterday. Um, there's a picture of me and the wife from the other day. Yeah, that one do. <coughs> Save image as uh, on the desktop. This one. Here we go. Oh, freaky. There's a negative. Oh, no. So, yeah, you got... Oh, hexagon. <coughs> oh, wow. Oh, does that mean you could have... multiple photos if you printed it like that? Oh, wow, yeah, that's got a light. <coughs> oh. Uh, arc. So it comes out like an arc like that. Uh, Dodecagon. Yeah, this is all new features. I haven't seen this before. Uh, cone. Oh, no, it's cylinder. Ooh. Uh, cone. That's quite good. Sphere. And then a vase. That's just another. It's just another round light one, I suppose. That's actually really good. <coughs> I 
So yeah, it's got some quite good, uh, yeah, it makes lamps. Control points. Oh, wow. Ooh! Oh, wow, that's different. <laughs> oh, wow, that would be really cool. Yeah, no, that's actually really good. Oh, look, you can even uh, put a hanger on it. So let me put this back to flat. So how do these... So these don't print like normal lipophanes, though, do they? They're uh, layered. Can't save it unless I got a license. Yeah, so you you trial version used to be able to do. It. Yeah, it has come an extremely long way. Put you out of job. I don't know whether it would put you out of job, Martin, but to make lipophane vases or whatever would be quite cool. My question is, can you import multiple photos? Um, actually, I've got a bunch of photos. Um, let me do new. Well, I didn't want it like that. Uh, file, create, epiphone. Alright, so... I'll just go with flat. <coughs> I want to see if I can import multiple photos. Three models. How to create. We do three my photos. Yeah, after painting. Open. And then go to a hexagon. Yes, you can. <coughs> <coughs> Those photos are running the wrong way, though. There's no actual. Oh, hang on. Nope. So, yes, you can do multiple. Multiple pictures. But this put me in. Let me uh, see if I can grab. Uh, what have I got? Hexagon. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah. The only thing is, yeah, they ran the wrong way. But yeah, that would be cool though especially if you took the took the model and then uh, exported it and made a base for it uh program is luban i will post the link again you can set the orientation before you import um not by the looks of it all right so that's just one photo one two three four five six <clears throat> so, yeah, I've got six photos. That just inverts it that way. Um, no problem. Uh, there's got to be a way of reorientating the pictures. Rotate, shift. Alright, that just does that. No, I don't do nothing. What's this do? That does nothing. Oh, that's a snipe. <coughs> um, no, it doesn't look like there's a way to edit the orientation of photos. See, really, when you import, it should bring up another list. Of photos like one, two, three, and you have different options. 
Oh, you can set it as assembly parts. Ooh. Oh, instead of printing it in one go. Alright, so you can print. Looks like it, come, it comes apart. No pillar. Ooh. No, I want an actual plug. Plug. An actual plug that you plug a USB into that goes into this plug socket. That is what I asked for, wasn't it? Yeah, USB plug. Not cable, plug. Object. Explode. Oh yeah, look, pieces. It all slots together. Oh no, that's not what I wanted. I wanted an assembly with a pillar. Object explode. Yeah, that's really cool. The only thing with this though, once you do assembly, it removes the, the light bit. You go back to one thing and it puts it back in. <coughs> that would be really cool. Yeah, so up <coughs> negative. Oh no, I don't like negative. Yeah, invert it just flips it. Let me go back to a flat. Yeah, see, see, it's horizontal. There's not an option to rotate it. Yay! That that that's a USB plug, not a USB cable. Well, could you see when I sent a message to your mother? <coughs> Alright, let's plug this in and see what the temperature is in. Can I plug it in that one? Yeah. <coughs> right, give that a minute to boot up. That is still hot, I believe. <coughs> I wonder if I, let's go into my photos, where are they, uh, three models, i really got to get around to doing these uh, videos, um, yeah see these photos, are, uh, the photo is actually around the right way. But for some reason, oh look, it's, it's caught the shadow of this and put it in the, the picture. So it is, so I wonder if I turn it around that way. Uh, I don't know if that will save it. Will that save it? Yes, it does save it around that way. And then re-import it. It still puts it in landscape. Doesn't make any sense, does it? Oh, hang on. Rotate. Nope. I don't do it either. Mm. Evoke 2D window. What's this? No idea. So yeah, <coughs> you can make lipophanes, but if they're not importing correctly, you can't. See, that one's around the right way. Let's try that one. Yeah, see, it just makes it, oh, unless it's because there's the model size on the height. Let's change that to 400. And then re-import it. Nope. That's just made it 400 mils tall by 600. <coughs> so yeah, this must print out in one go. 
we set about 50. So yeah, really it should be that way around with the hangar at the top. <coughs> but for some reason they're coming in the wrong way around for some reason. What about that one? Yeah, see that's coming, that's, well that's completely chopped off. Alright, let me try, try this picture again. See now that coming correctly, let me reset this picture. I wonder if it's the size of the picture. <coughs> yeah, that's what I was just thinking. That'd be the original photo. See, these are scaled down when they come down from Google. Whereas, these are... Properties, details. These are... 2500 by... <coughs> 3800. Yeah, they're very large photos. Yeah, no, rotate rotates the actual um, whole thing. So. <clears throat> well, it should make any difference. If it's a portrait photo, it should come in portrait. Shouldn't make <clears throat> any difference of what the resolution is. Let's make that 400. I actually looks better like that to be honest. And then import it again. Three models are create Voodoo Bree. My photos after printing. Painting even. See it just auto instead of it just automatically rotates it. Which makes no sense whatsoever. Oh, Prusa's finished. Just done some ABS on the Prusa. <coughs> oh, what have I done? Oh, crud. That one. There we go. So, yeah, not quite sure. I think that needs some work to it. Because that import's fine. But yeah, not quite sure. <coughs> but yeah, that's basically intro to Luban. Let me uh, grab this ABS print. So this is still hot. Ooh, the bed's up to 110 degrees. Because <coughs> of the temperature in there. Let me see what... Uh, oh, I closed it. 192.68.1.223 Should be working. It is a 42 degrees in there, supposedly. <coughs> so the ambient air temperature is coming. The, uh, hot in there. I need to cool this. Cooling done. So yeah, 40 degrees ambient in there. <coughs> um, actually, I'll leave that there for time being. Temperature is instantly dropping. Mic going? It might just because I was at a. It was at the bottom of the enclosed Leicester. I can't think. I don't think I can reach it to the top. Mm, maybe able to. Hang on. There we go. Let's see what that says. <coughs> I'll give it a minute to sort itself out. Mic going? Is it going? 
Is it? Is it? It might because I s stepped away. I don't know. I'll tell you, I've had nothing but issues with this blooming mic lately. As you can see, I'm using the the Britney Spears headset. headset. Uh, let me just double check my. Hello. Hello. Ah, uh, sounds right. Sounds good enough to me. Hello. <coughs> do, 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 do. It's reading 40 degrees at the top of the, the, the cabinet. That's how I've got it. And overhead. Sat up there in the in the top hood. It's forty degrees, forty point three. So, uh, so yeah, it's not bad ambient temperature to be honest. It keeps it steady in there. I would say it's warmer than that. Oh, I suppose it could be. Yeah, forty degrees, pretty good. Nice ambient, nice ambient temperature within there. So it definitely helps with uh, layer adhesion. Minus the leg on that for some reason. But um, you can see the the layers. This was on my Mark III the other day. And so the layer, there's a layer separation here, here. There's quite a few. There's another one on the back. But compared to this one, even though it's got a missing leg, so I snapped it off. It's got no layer separation at all. So having that solid ambient temperature. With no fluctuations, it does help. And I've got to admit, the print quality is a lot better. Yeah, I don't know if you'll be able to see, but this one off the Mark III has got a real ribby, whereas this is quite smooth. It is a lot smoother than my Mark III, that's for sure. But now I can't even use it because I managed to break the, the uh, cooling fan duct is broken. So I've now got to print a new one. Which I was going to do anyway, but that's beside the point. And now I can't even get this out. There we go. Let's just open the door. Take the top off. There, cool down. take forever to cool down but yeah no it's uh it's doing all right i just need i just want the better firmware and i need to also see if i can shrink down the x carriage because it's actually the actual bed size is um 280 by 220 full bed size but it's only using like, uh, I think it's 270 by 205, I think it is. It's not using the whole bed, um, which is a pain. It's like, why have such a big bed in there if you can't use it all? So, uh, I may think about um, this vortex, vortex duct. Uh, right there on the side of the nozzle is usually mid string and a very sloppy height. Air in a vortex pattern around the nozzle tip. This pattern allows for efficient delivery of air. Hmm. Might have to give uh, this one a go. Why is my phone vibrating? No idea. Yeah, I might have to give this uh, this Vortex one a go. So yeah, that's basically the what's on it in a minute. It is it's, it is a P PLA shroud. There's no 
No, ifs or buts about that. I need to... Can you still hear me okay? Oh, Matt, you've messaged and I can't see. Why can't I move the access? What's going on? In Luban window, you can open an image and rotate it. So, like others said, rotate the image. Ah, in Luban 2D window. Alright. What? This isn't even reading any temperatures. What is going on? Hmm. I just like the fact it's got it's got a on off switch. Actually on the front of the printer. Oh, that's better. Heat bed's reading forty seven percent. Oh what's going on there? The <coughs> screen is something left to be desired for, that's a little bit funky. these off. I really would like a flex plate for this <coughs> instead of the ultra base. Okay, I think I've got a first layer right. But this fan is knackered. Let me just pull this out. I can find the right that one. Oh. Is that the right size or do I need a smaller one? Oh no, that is the right size. <coughs> Pop that back in so I don't lose it. Yeah, this can actually have two... two extruders on it. Supposedly, according... Well, it's got a slot on the board. I don't know how you'd put two hot ends in there. Yeah, this is just PLA. Been, been, been printed like that. Morning, Stephen. How are you? But yeah, I think I'm going to print uh, one of these out. I need to save it. Do, do, do. Actually, I'm going to pop it in my Formax Pro folder. How you doing, Stephen? Are you just woken up? So, yeah, new fan duct. Yeah, this is just PLA. So, yeah, this is completely warped. Why put PLA on a high temp? I have no idea. Yep, just woke up. <laughs> Um, I stuck it in here, didn't I? Vortex fan. Files. Yeah, we said that's good. So we can now import this into Slicer. Uh, yeah, this one. For the Prusa. Come on. I am using carb loaded pet G and my standard that one. Yes. Get rid of that. Import this. Files that one. Print settings support material. Uh, <coughs> yeah, I want it to generate uh, pattern. Yeah, it's fine. Condo is point one. I do slice. Uh, even half four normal. Oh, 
No, that's too hot. That's the temperature inside my Formax a little while ago. Oh, wow, that's a lot of support. No, not everywhere. Just build support, build on the platform. Otherwise, it's going to put supports everywhere inside. I am going to infill and change the gyroid. Because that's what's recommended with a... Where's that gone? That one. What do you say? Gyroid, 11 to 50%. So, we're up about to 15%. There. Slice again. Yeah, no, that's really hot. Um, we are currently sat at um, 31 degrees in the caravan. Which isn't too bad. I've actually got a nice airflow going through at the minute. So it's um, not too bad. Uh, three hours, yeah, that's fine. Vortex fan done in pet G. Just need to load the pet G now because he's got. Oh, I could put it in ABS, I suppose. What would be better, pet G or ABS? Uh, support distance to. Uh, where's support distance? Interface pattern is point two. Contact Z distance is point one. Oh, 47 degrees. No. We we got out to like 30 degrees last week and that's too much for me. I hate heat. I, I, I can sit around the 20, 22 degree mark and I'm okay. Reticular grid. Well, that one. One point a uh, zero point one nine distance. This one, yeah. All right. We'll see what this does like. Really gotta save this. Mark three. Yep. Let's just resave it. Slash. What do you reckon, though? ABS or be you right in the carb loaded? Grid works better for club detail. Alright. I've got ABS loaded at the moment. I could print ABS. Carb loaded. Yeah, earlier it's carb loaded. It just means I've got to change the um, filament over. Alright, export that. Uh, did I already explore it, did I? Oh, well. Upload to Mark 3. Upload that. Um, Preheat this up to... Yeah, that'll do. Yeah, well, it's to go in... Um, it's to replace the fan duct for my Formax. Because it's printed in PLA. And it started to, started to droop and then got caught and just, yeah. It just really softened up in there. So we're going to give this Vortex one a go. Well, to be honest, I've been printing... Um... I say, I just printed that in ABS on the Mark III. Um, let me minimise this and go back to the main camera. Um, just printed this on the Mark III ABS and it works quite nicely. This is the UV change one. Let's see if I can get it to change a little bit. Come on, charge up. It's 
not quite sunny enough. Hang on a sec. Hey, you can see now. It's a nice uh, purple tint. This was uh, the <laughs> pad model. No, this one should be uh, fairly robust, actually. But yeah, nice. No, um, it's the filament from the July Mystery Box. Got some uh, ABS UV change. It prints really nice. But I did some uh, filamentum ASA. Um... Filamentum ASA on the on the Prusa and the layer separation just happened. But I started doing ASA on the Formex. Because it's enclosed, I don't get any of the layer separation at all. But um That's the main reason I got the Formax really is to do these higher temps filaments. Because it's enclosed and it'll hold the temperature. No, that was the first time I tried ASA. And it actually printed better on the Formax than it did the Prusa. So, uh. But yeah, the Prusa did ABS okay. So, how ABS worked better than that ASA, I don't know. But. Uh, yeah, it's this here. Um, overhead. I'll bring this back a bit. Yeah, it's this. Oh. Anycubic Formax Pro. But yeah, that's what I'm printing. Uh, <coughs> this Vortex fan duct for. Because the PLO, a PLA one just broke. But it comes with uh, 2208 standard on the X and Y. Which I was really shocked about. Alright. Let me unload. No, this ABS is um, Rep Wrapper. It's a US company. And um, they use uh, straw fiber spools, I think these are. They're actually really nice spools, to be honest. I think they just clip together. But yeah, no, the ABS prints really well. That was really loud. Uh, carb loaded. Nip the end off. I don't know whether you can hear me. Right, load that in. Yep, yeah, Predator's still going. I've actually got to grab the SD card for that and change filament and that over. So I'm about to start another a, a large print. SD card. Yep, that's fine. Uh, filament removed. Cold extrusion. I have nowhere to put any of my prints. I think I might just put a post up on Facebook saying uh, anyone want any of these. Because I have no room to store any of this. Congrats on Bo Oh, yeah. Yeah, I heard about that. I'm not overly bothered. They were going to end up screwing up about government one way or another. Uh, yes, I did install a new lead screw. I did that Friday on stream. Did I do that Friday during stream? I think so. I think it was Friday. But yeah, installed it and uh, got quite a bit of difference out of it. Right, that's heating up. I'm actually going to be opening some filamentum. Starlight 
and Vertigo Grey for this. Oh, I need to change the M600 command to M1. Well, hopefully it'll be better than Tracy, yeah. Uh, morning, Grumpy Dude, how are you? Yeah, Tristan, I installed the, need the new Leader Crew Friday during the live stream, I think. Well, I haven't printed with it yet. This is just some of the filamentum I've had left over from that they sent me. Retweet. <laughs> oh, yeah, he moaned Friday, didn't he? Uh, yeah, it's loaded. Print. That is the Prusa off. The end of three still printing. It's printing my heat change PLA that I had in the box. Printing the sample man. I might leave them there to change colour. Um, I was going to say something. I can't remember what now. Oh yeah. Uh, G-code. That's what I want. 427% uh, Jessica Rabbit. Uh, SD card. Oh. Here it is. Change the M six hundred command to an M one. Since that's the code they use for their filament changes. On this stupid Chichu firmware, which they won't release the source for. Uh, yep, that's fine. So, I'm going to use oh, what am I doing? Oh, I've lost my train of thought. There it is. Open with PD viewer. No, this is what I'm printing on the pillar top. A four hundred millimeter tall Jessica Rabbit statue. Uh Starlight for the bottom and then Vertigo Grey for the rest. Point four layer heights with a point eight nozzle. So it should be pretty good. Did you see the milk car? The milk car? Um, new filament. No, I haven't. Milk car filamentum. Looks like a sandstone. Uh, that's very much like um, one of the FX filaments from Polyalchemy. I really wish they'd give better descriptions. So yeah, it's a, it's a coffee. Martin B, Martin B. I don't know. Looks like a very dirty coffee, doesn't it? A watered down coffee. Well, yeah, true. Comes from an Arabic name of city with port where come mocha coffee came from. So, yeah, it looks like a, a mocha. Hmm. It's alright. Uh, 29 degrees is dropped too. Minimise that again. Minimise that. Oh no, I'm on the... Right, that's currently printing on the Prusa, I hope. 
Hopefully it's doing well. Filament. Uh, starlight. Knife. Let's see what the winding likes on this roll, shall we? So, 3D question today is... What is your favourite infill pattern? I normally always use rec rec Rectula. Got no sticker in this one. Oh. Oh, wow, that is some crap winding. Sort of twisted over one. It, oh, fo yeah, I want a photon. I need to get a review done for the Formax first before I can ask for a photon. Um, cameras. That's not a very good winding, is it? All down that side. Don't know. Don't know. Brand, brand new, brand new roll. Just took it. Just literally unsealed it out of the box. Oh, what's going on here? Oh, my filament's got bent. I think it's where I haven't used it for so long. It's uh, warped. Oh, come on, if you can. Got me the whole predator to get the filament off. Tangles itself because the spool's too small for the filament. Where's the filament? There it is. Run that in. I'll come back to chat in a second. Oh, I ain't got the SD card. Alright, stop. Some nice fat starlight coming out of there. No, these rolls have been, well, nothing compared to the Vertigo Grey when I first did it. That's, I've still got that in the cupboard to show off. Repetier Android app. Ooh. Didn't know there was one. I knew there was one for, that allowed you to get, hang on. But no, I, I do use Repetier, so if there's an actual new Repetier app. Uh, oh, Repetier... Informer. No, the informer one I've used, it just sends you notifications. Unless there's another one I don't know about. What's this one? Ooh. So, a rip rap i3 ramps, minor repetitive slicer. Oh, 
Uh, I used it to get... I used to use it um, when I had the printers in the house. I used to use it for... Um, just to get a notification when a print was done or something. But no, I don't use it now. I tend to just log into the um, web interface via my phone. So, that's what I tend to do now. But yeah, it's a shame there's not an actual app. But yeah, it's just a, a, a messages. But has it been a new update lately? Is there a sticker in here? No, no sticker in there. Didn't get a sticker with that, Rob. Uh, I need to eject the SD card. So I'm gonna pop it in the Predator. Right, that's green. So that'll do the base in starlight and then the rest in vertical grey. Yeah, that's my role of uh, filament and vertigo grey I had. All knots in it. Um, if you pull forward and set up a user account, yes, you could. Um, that's something I haven't actually done yet. Um, I do need to set up a reverse proxy script and everything. Yes, I did see the... I, I commented about it. I commented about the burnt down uh, i3, uh, the Maker Plus. Uh, oh, Skynet's replied to me. I took a bit of a back burner for the last couple of weeks because the weather has been nice. <laughs> yeah, I've I've been retweeting your stuff and everything. Predator to go in. Uh, well, I've just started a print on it. The last print I did was the Voodoo Brie. So she was done well over a month and a half ago. So that's the last time I printed on it. Just because I haven't got the, the filament to run for it. And so I'm literally doing this because it's only 400 grams of worth of filament. So. But yeah, no, I haven't. I'm trying to look at parts and stuff for. The any cubic uh, for the for the mag ball upgrade and everything that I want to do, but um, on the back burner. Yeah, I went on filament fumes. <laughs> yeah, there goes the predator. Actually, I'm gonna see if that first layer goes down. Actually, I need to check this first layer on the Prusa as well. Yep, that's curling up in places. I really hate support on the Prusa. Oh, that's a nice fur. Oh, wow, that's actually quite large, actually. Oh, I think I need to re-level this bed. It's a bit wonky. Oh, well, that will do. I also need to print a new fan shroud, uh, but I'm not... I don't know. I'm a bit in a rut, to be honest, on what to print. I say my core A8 is just sat there. I haven't done anything with that until since I did the, the Godzilla. Um, when I maxed out the build volume of the Godzilla. Uh, what 
slicer what slicer are you using for uh Prusa slicer i only use Prusa slicer Prusa slicer for all my printers my am8 formax pro predator core a8 and my ender 3 and obviously my mark 3 with um custom print settings I really need to find a way to get rid of all the default stuff. So you can see all my uh, profiles and everything. But yeah, no, I don't use anything other than Prusa Slicer. Since I've had the, the Mark III just before Christmas, uh, Prusa Slicer is all I've used. Well, sorry, it was Slick 3RPE before yeah, they renamed it. Ooh, sparkling rainbow. Yeah, and I got to play with the the modifying meshes last week because I did um the new spool holder for the new um filament winder for the mystery box samples. Um, managed to get remove the top and bottom layers and just have a honeycomb in fill pattern. It come out alright. It's a bit flimsy though, but that's better. Yeah, that's the the new spool holder that I'm using for the filament. No more cardboard cores. But I need to reprint this slightly bigger. So when you guys like print it out normal size, they will just the, the new samples will just slot on. Or you can use whatever you like sort of thing. But I think I need to just increase this by like two or three three percent. What printers have you got, Tristan? Do, do, do. Oh, Filamentum News. Uh, nothing that I'd, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's where it is. It's on their Filamentum News email. Oh, they got a new CPE coming as well. Ghost White. I just wish their, their actual spools were a little bit larger. So you don't get um, the filament come off when it's unrolling. And that they did kilo kilogram spools. Michelangelo, clone Prusa Bear, and a DOI Core X Y. Yeah, just I um, use Prusa Slice. Well, if if you use Cura and that's what you use, then stick with Cura. If you're getting good prints out of it, then stick with Cura. There's no need to change. I don't think. Uh, let's hope it's better than what people experience on Twitters. So they've actually got a new Amazon everyone rainbow. Oh, rainbow sparkle. Is that the one? Oh, no, hang on. Oh, chameleon glitter. Powder coat effect, super strong metal glittery texture. Hmm. Isn't the chameleon one the same as the um, uh, Strong Hero 3D? They look nice. Hmm. 26.99, that's a bit expensive. All oh, their special ones are that price, though, aren't they? Mini Rainbow PLA? What's Mini Rainbow PLA? About nine to eleven millimeters per color. Yeah, they got a mini rainbow now. So is that one with shorter transitions? Yeah, it's fair enough. I think I I used Cura a few times when I had my A8, but I ended up. Uh, sticking with S3D at that point until I got my Mark III and that's when I started using Prusa Slicer um, by which point I was able to print on my A8 
a lot faster than what I was using with S3D. Because up until that point, I didn't really know anything about speeds or anything until I started messing around with stuff in the Prusa Slicer. And then I actually ended up using my profile for my Mark III on my A8 and I was getting just as good prints out of my A8 as I was my um, Prusa. So... Where's the time? Ten past one. I hope so too. Oh, what on the filament? Yeah, can you imagine what how much they'd want though? But the thing is, if they're just going to... The thing is, they're not doing anything now. Everyone, I think nearly everyone that has or use S3D that I've seen in the community have gone over to Prusa Slicer. I do wish the supports were a little bit better in Prusa Slicer. Um, but other than that, I, I stopped using... Yeah, I stopped using S3D when I got my Prusa. And haven't gone back since. I haven't need to go back. And close that one. But yeah, could you imagine how much money um they'd want? Do do do. Anyone need a USB hub? Xena is looking for... A what? Really? Since when does everyone do USB hubs? Where's my Amazon? I've got to go look at this. Everyone USB hub. Oh, maybe not. Oh, side company. I wish you'd come over that last week. I bought one the other day. Yeah, tell her, tell her to uh, message me, Martin. Uh, I'll have a look. I could do with another USB hub. I only bought a full one. So yeah, I've got myself a, a light box coming today, only a small one, because um, I haven't got a light box and I can't fit my big uh, projector screen in here to be able to take photos with it. So I bought a, a little, it's only like 25 millimeter by 25, 25mm, 250mm by 250mm by 250 Just something I can pop on the desk, take a quick picture and... Uh, um, yeah, it's just one of these. One of these little ones. 20 LEDs in it. It'll do the job. It's only, only 9.99. Just a small one, black and white backgrounds. Just to take better pictures of photos and stuff. That should be here this afternoon. The joys of next day delivery. Yeah, 25 centimetres. That's what I was trying to say. Do, do, do. I was actually going to go and check something. Um, is that the one I did the other day? Yes. Oh, not that one, not that one. Not that one. Not that one, that one. I want that code. Do, 
Do do do. Oh, maybe it's not that. Where's my tracking number? Well, this is that. Oh, good morning, country. How are you? Uh, I should get a message soon, should I? Do, do, do. Yeah, I'll see where she comes up with it. How are you doing, Mr. Country? Uh, morning, Ricky. How are you? Everyone's coming in there now. Um. Oh. International tracking. How are you uh, doing this morning? Where the blooming hell is it then? Hmm. Odd. Trying to figure out what to do for anniversary. Well, happy anniversary. Um, and what to do. No idea. Go, go, I don't know. Go out for lunch. Cinema. Um, yeah, I don't know. I've got my anniversary coming up. In a month's time. I don't know what we're doing. I haven't uh, got that far. Um, what do you mean? Oh, layer height, yeah. I think the only way you could do that is if you had a IDEX system. That's on the 21st. What's on the 21st? Oh, is your anniversary on the 21st? Oh, Disney, 21st. You going again? Cool. Disney. Yeah, I really want to take kids to Disney, but not until our youngest is old, like tall enough to actually appreciate, or old enough to appreciate it. And plus, it's like nearly 10 grand for the six of us to go every month. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, you would, you need, you would, yeah, I suppose it's just like height. Yeah, that would be cool. To have like point three on the internal and then point one five as the perimeter wall. But what would you print first? Would you print the internal first and then the outside, or the outside first? Well, no, you have to do the outside first, wouldn't you? If you want to do one point five layer height. No, I think he's planning to do lightsaber when Galaxy Quest in October for his birthday. If I remember, that's what Country said. <coughs> oh, it's getting warm in here. What's the temperature up to? Um, I'm still sat on the pitty little screen. There we go. We are at twenty nine point nine degrees in here. Well, I've got the, the I've got breeze going through. So, how's this changing colour? 
Oh, not very good. Slightly pink. I need to leave him out in the actual sun for a little bit. Then I need to wrap him in something. Leave him out in the sun so I can get a picture of it two times. I can't print anything now on the Formax until... Proust is done. Um. <laughs> Flew over Paris, Texas when I flew to Dallas. Yes, wife just messaged me. Am I finishing at half one? Yes, I am. So, yeah, another ten minutes, guys. Um, I want to check the Predator. Damn, that's quite large. Well, it's 427%, I suppose. Okay, they look great. One each. There you are. One each of what? I have no idea what you're chatting about now, Martin. Are you behind or something? Alright, country. You enjoy the rest of your day, man. Maybe behind. I have no idea what you're chatting about now. Yeah, I will do. I'll go babysit the kids in the once I'm done here. Go watch the youngest uh, two. We'll probably end up tearing the house apart. Um, I was doing something on comment one now. It sounds like the predator's on the second line. I don't know whether anyone saw my pictures on Twitter the other day, but I did. These were the two prints I did before uh, I found that the lead screw was bent. Come on, focus. Focus. I don't know if you can see the black banding at all on them. No, I just don't want to focus, do they? Oh yeah, you can see the black banding slightly darker. Well, I found out the the lead screw was uh, binding, so I finally got the new one. Obviously, bitted it Friday, and uh, printed these exact same G code and no banding, which is great. Ah, I'm with you now, Martin. But yeah, I don't believe they printed this in PLA. I think it's PLA anyway. Well, either way, it was too soft. In there, it's just drooped. So, end of uh, August's order for mystery boxes coming up. Um... That's a point. Where is that gone? Um, no, not that one. Not that one. Not that one. Not that one. Where is it? Nope. Nope. Hmm, I'm confused. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. 
I I don't model. I just like the model because it's got overhangs and such. Uh, I'm trying to work out where. I'm confused. Really confused. Where is it, that one? Yeah, have a good day yourself, Stephen. Got to run. No, that's fine. Talk to you later, Martin. I'm gonna. Stream's gonna end soon, anyway. Where is this damn picture? Grumpy, have you had one of my mystery boxes? I can't remember. A few months back, yeah, I thought you had. No, that's fine. I thought you had had one. For some reason, I thought you you had one the one of July's boxes. I don't know why I thought that. Oh, I see. Right, right. I didn't copy it properly. Copy. Yeah, that must have been the one leading up to the uh, meetup. these international parcels oh for peace no <sighs> Trying to work out where parcels are. Oh, no, I need two. Alright, so they've all been picked up. It's on its way. Yeah, well, I'm trying to work out where the international parcels are, the boxes that I've sent. 
for some reason they're not showing up on the home site that they've been they've gone out of the country. Which I'm a little bit worried about. But anyway. We might have six weeks from package from Banggood. Let's not like them. I wouldn't know. I haven't ordered from Banggood. Next month I will be ordering from Banggood because that's where all the stuff is coming from for uh, August's project. So, unless I go and try and find it all on AliExpress, I suppose. Since I've already got an account on there. And I don't have any problems with AliExpress. But anyway, that is the end of today's stream. Thank you to everyone that's joined. Um, I hope everyone's had a good chat. Um, got a few things done and such. Um, I will post pictures of prints that are done when they're done on my Twitter page. So if you're not following me on Twitter, link is in the description. All my links are down there. Help me by coming to Patreon if you want to, or one of donations down there. I've got Amazon wish list down there if you want to help out the channel. If not, just like, subscribe, and I'll see you all on Wednesday. Take care, everyone. Have a good week.